I now have the honor of introducing our next guest. When he joined us in Pittsburgh in 2022, he was serving as Attorney General. Today, he is joining us as Governor. As Governor, he has stood up for women's reproductive rights and has promised to veto any attempt to make Pennsylvania a right-to-work state. I'm sure that most of you in this room have shared space with him in one of his tours around Pennsylvania, whether visiting our training centers or central labor councils. He is no stranger to labor. He recently announced a new directive for all Commonwealth agencies under his, uh, under his jurisdiction to evaluate and implement the appropriate use of project labor agreements on Commonwealth pro projects. Ladies and gentlemen, give a rounding, a big round of applause for Governor Josh Shapiro. to see all you here and let me begin by thanking President Farida. She is awesome leading this organization with strength, with determination. She's a partner of mine in progress in Pennsylvania. Angela, thank you for your leadership. Appreciate you. I'm grateful to be welcomed back to this wonderful annual convention with labor leaders from all across our great commonwealth. I want to thank you for what you do every day. And I want to give a special shout out for one labor leader who came here from D.C. because he knows the power in Pennsylvania. Let me thank AFSCME's leader, Lee Saunders, who joins us here today. Thank you, Lee. And I am grateful, even though he's a Yinzer, He's got a national profile. I want to thank the leader of the steelworkers. I want to thank McCall for being here. Thank you very much, Mr. Woo! President. Let me tell you something. The women and men of organized labor, well, I consider you to be the backbone of our communities, our economy, and of course, our commonwealth. I know we're fortunate here in Pennsylvania because we have the best, most highly skilled workforce in the nation. And you've heard me say it before, I'll say it again. We are a people-powered economy, and y'all are the people providing the power. Thank you very much. I've seen your hard work firsthand in times of triumph and in times of tragedy. Of course, it was the building trades of Philadelphia, who after a portion of I-95 collapsed and the experts told us it would take months to reopen, months before those 200,000 cars and trucks every day would soon pass by, months before moms and dads could get their kids to school and Teamsters truck drivers could get their product to market. Months, they said. But no, it was the Philadelphia building trades quite literally working. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, through the heat, through the rain. Some dads even worked on Father's Day, and we reopened that road in just 12 days. 12 days. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you know what? You know what was so great about that? Because the eyes of the nation 
were on Philadelphia. The eyes of the nation were on Pennsylvania. And when they looked to our Commonwealth, what did they see? They saw organized labor getting the job done. It's not just in times of tragedy. It's the little triumphs every single day. We see it in our classrooms with our great educators who shape the minds of young people, our future leaders, maybe our future tradesmen and women. And they work in challenging conditions every day, yet they always rise above it to do right by our kids. It's the members of our public sector unions who serve this Commonwealth honorably. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And when they go to work, they work for our neighbors. They fight for our fellow Pennsylvanians. The women and men of organized labor, they are the best in the nation. And President Saunders, you heard me say that. Take that back to D.C. And I know you know this. I know you know this. But I will always have your back. Because I want you to understand, I see our unions as partners in our progress here in Pennsylvania. You know, my administration, and we've been at this a little over a year, we live by three simple letters, GSD. We focused every day on getting shit done for the good people of Pennsylvania. And I know, I know that's the same attitude you bring. That's the same chip on your shoulder you bring to the office, bring to the roads, bring to our workforce every single day. That belief that we gotta put points on the board every day. We gotta make progress. We gotta get stuff done. And since I took office January last, I've had the privilege of working with organized labor to open up the doors of opportunity for more and more Pennsylvanians. And to give you, not just through Angela, but all your members, a seat at the table when we are making big decisions. Consider this, on my first day as your governor, I signed an executive order making 92% of state government jobs no longer require a college degree. We did that. We did that because we want to make clear here in Pennsylvania, we value skills and experience. Whether you gain that experience in the military or you gain that experience in your union hall. We value skills and experience here in Pennsylvania, and we believe that arbitrary degree requirements shut too many people out. We did that on day one. And you know what? The work to fight for workers is always continuing. Just yesterday, I had the honor of standing with Steve Katniss from SEIU 668, Mike Sukel from AFSCME DC 13. We stood together to sign a new executive order to expand and strengthen benefits that we offer to our Commonwealth employees 80,000 strong, and to make sure we are recruiting the best of the best to lead Pennsylvania forward. That work is always going on when it comes to standing up for workers. Just a few weeks ago in a union hall, I stood with the great Philip Ameris from the laborers in Western Pennsylvania to announce a new initiative to expand the use of project labor agreements on Commonwealth projects. It's been too long, and now we're using PLAs. I've been proud to stand with you. I've been proud to have the support of leaders like Rob Baer, the Pennsylvania Building Trades, when I announced my plan to be able to protect and create more energy jobs and grow our energy economy in Pennsylvania always focused on making sure that jobs are central to those conversations. The energy plan, for example, I put forth would create thousands of good paying union jobs in the energy sector. Especially, we are poised for great things in that area, especially given the fact that thanks to President Biden, we are the only state in the nation to secure not one, but two regional hydrogen hubs that are gonna create jobs for generations here in this Commonwealth. I want to give a special thanks to the Allegheny Fayette Labor Council leader, Darren Kelly, who was integral in helping make sure we put our best foot forward in those projects. And I want you to know that as we're working to create jobs, we're also working to protect jobs. 
like when I stood together with UAW Local 3303 to protect over a thousand jobs in Butler County for folks who are making critically important steel to protect our energy use and our national security. Thank you, guys. The future of steel production looks bright here in Pennsylvania and specifically in Butler County. We've all worked together. We've worked together to expand union membership here in Pennsylvania at a time where we know there are some attacking our rights all across this country. On our watch, working together, 34,000 more Pennsylvanians became members of unions last year right here in our great commonwealth. And let me be crystal clear about something. No matter what happens, no matter what political winds come, Pennsylvania will never be a right to work state so long as I'm your governor. Never. That's right. That's right. Never. Now listen. Now listen, not only have we worked together to protect your rights, we've also made real investments in our communities and into your members. We have 400 new Pennsylvania state troopers and we funded millions of dollars for more police in our communities, new members of the FOP, new members of the PSTA, because we believe in creating more opportunities and more public safety. We've made sure to make critical investments, not just in our communities, but also in our classrooms. When it comes to education, I want you to know, last year, working together, and note that I am the only governor in the entire country with a divided legislature, literally the only one. In fact, there's only two divided legislatures in our nation, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the Congress of the United States. And let me tell you, we get a hell of a lot more done than the Congress of the United States, but coming together, Republican and Democrat alike, and a special shout out to Representative Tom Mahaffey, who's here with us today, whose district we were in, who was integral to this work. We made the largest investment in public education in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We are damn proud of what we've done in our classrooms. The largest increase in basic education funding, and it wasn't just dollars going to the bottom lines of school district. We attacked important problems in our schools. Now, thanks to this bipartisan work, every single student, when they go to school in Pennsylvania, now starts their day with universal free breakfast. Our teachers can now teach children with full bellies who are ready to learn. We heard loud and clear that we need more teachers coming into our schools. And so many of these wonderful folks who were studying to be teachers oftentimes had to choose between making a living and going to work in a classroom. Well, no longer is that the case. No longer will you have to do your student teaching and have to take out a loan in order to do that or lose money in order to do that. For the first time ever, we created a student teacher stipend package here in Pennsylvania for student teachers to be able to benefit while they're learning their important craft. And by the way, that program is already oversold. We're coming back with more resources in this year's budget to help our student teachers and the future generation of education. At the same time we've invested in our communities and in our classroom, we have invested a whole lot more, as I said I would do on the campaign trail, in union apprentices and in VOTEC, giving more Pennsylvanians the freedom to chart their own course and the opportunity to succeed. In fact, since I took office, and Angela has been an important part of this, our administration has improved 39 new apprenticeship programs, and get this, enrolled more than 7,000 new apprentices here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's big, we should be proud of that. I'm incredibly proud, if you can't tell, of our collective accomplishments so far. But I'm mindful that we've got a lot more work to do. And I know that you still face threats from those who don't value the work that you do and who want to take away your fundamental rights. And as I've made clear, that won't happen on my watch. 
and under the leadership of the great Secretary Nancy Walker of the Department of Labor and Industry, we are cracking down on worker misclassification and making sure we are investing in labor law compliance. Now, I want you to know, I know a little something about people who try and screw over workers. I used to serve as your Attorney General, and when I was your Attorney General, I'm proud that Nancy and I together prosecuted the largest Davis-Bacon prevailing wage theft case in the history of the United States of America. We didn't only prosecute it. Hear me on this. We found them criminally responsible for their conduct, and we made sure that every single penny of the nearly $21 million that they stole from Pennsylvania workers went back to those Pennsylvania workers right before Christmas so they could buy presents for their kids and their grandkids, and we held that company accountable. I'll continue to hold companies accountable that screw over Pennsylvania workers. I want you to know, last year we took a major step toward protecting workers on a multi-state basis. Together with Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey, we, we created a joint task force to fight back against employee misclassification in our respective states. And I'm mindful that we need to do more. Consider this for a moment, especially those of you on the eastern side of our state that border New Jersey. New Jersey has four million people fewer than the population of Pennsylvania. But they have 70, 70, 70 more labor law investigators than we do here in our Commonwealth. That doesn't make any sense. That is why my latest budget proposal starts the work of closing the gap, calling for enough funding to hire more labor law compliance investigators so we can make sure every single employer follows the law and treats their workers with dignity and with respect. We got to get that budget passed and get that done. I want you to know, thank you for clapping for the labor law compliance folks. I'll let them know you, you appreciate them. Our standing up for workers' rights, it, it can't just stop there. We also have to protect the rights of workers, all Pennsylvania workers, when they suffer a job loss, when they are down and out. I know how devastating that can be. And when I took office, we have made significant progress under Secretary Walker's leadership to improve our unemployment compensation claims system. Consider this for a moment. Within our first seven months of the Shapiro Davis administration, we eliminated the backlog of more than 40 thousand unemployment claims that had been sitting around since the pandemic. I want to give a special shout out to the great SEIU members who worked morning, noon, and night to clear out that backlog and get it done. Thank you, SEIU. And once we cleared that backlog out, we didn't stop there. We said we got to improve this system. And I can report to you that now when you call into our hotline, we have cut down the wait time to get unemployment compensation by 50%, 50% since I took office. LNI under Secretary Walker has big plans to keep improving our UC system. And my administration will continue to build an accessible and dependable claim system that our workers deserve. You know what else Pennsylvania workers deserve? Well, they deserve a guaranteed livable wage no matter where they work or who they work for. Now look, let's be real for a second. Our minimum wage in Pennsylvania has been stuck at $7.25 an hour for 15 years, and that is unacceptable. It is time we raise the minimum wage here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to 15 bucks an hour. I'm mindful, of course, that probably everybody in this room makes more than 15 bucks an hour, thanks to the advocacy of your great union leaders. But I think we're all aware there's still a whole lot of Pennsylvanians that don't earn that wage. And that is why it is time to come together, Democrat and Republican alike, to raise the wage. I've called on lawmakers to finally come together and get this done. And in this divided legislature, I believe now is the moment in time for us to do that work. Are you ready to join me in this fight to raise the wage here in Pennsylvania? Yes, we can. Look, 
I think now is a critical moment to invest in Pennsylvania workers and to grow our ranks. We've got serious workforce challenges in Pennsylvania. I don't have to tell you that. You see that in your classrooms, you see that out in the communities, and you see that in our union halls. Consider this for a moment. One out of every four Pennsylvanians today are seniors and on their way out of the workforce. By 2030, not too long from now, one out of every three Pennsylvanians will be a senior and on their way out of the workforce. We also have one of the smallest kindergarten classes in modern times. If we don't act now to train and retrain our workforce, if we don't act now to grow our workforce, if we don't invest more in skills training and development, we will fall behind. For us to be competitive in this people-powered economy, we need more people doing this work and we need more people properly trained and properly skilled. Investing today makes us more competitive tomorrow. And let me tell you something. I am competitive as hell. I want Pennsylvania to win. And the way we're going to win is by making sure there are more people like you, more people doing the work you do out in our communities every day. Now is the time to invest in our workers. Look, I want you to know, as I said at the top, y'all are our partners in progress. I'm going to continue to bet on you. I'm going to continue to believe in you and what is possible when you all are going to work every single day on our roads, on our bridges, and in our community centers. We'll continue to be, my administration and I, strong partners to labor unions, to bring forth creative, innovative solutions in Pennsylvania that are going to help you grow your ranks. We have a tremendous opportunity right now to grow our ranks, to do big things again. I want you to believe that here in Pennsylvania, we can do big things again. When it comes to energy, when it comes to safety, when it comes to the community well-being. And so much of that work is going to be driven by each and every one of you. We got a lot to do, Pennsylvania Labor. We got a lot to do together. I couldn't be more proud to serve as the 48th governor of this great commonwealth. I am profoundly grateful to each and every one of you in this room who saw to it that I would be here today doing this work, fighting for you. We got a lot more to do together, so let's get to work. Thank you all very, very much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.